Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. It's a bright early morning, actually it's not very bright, it's overcast. Early morning trying to get some farm chores in before the rains come. But um, today's video I want to show, we've uh, finished our new pasture, our, our what I consider our easternmost pasture. Finished the wiring on that and hooked it up and we're not getting the voltage we want. So uh, we're going to troubleshoot that. Come along with us. Just had to open my mouth and say beat the rain, didn't I? It started to sprinkle. So, okay, so where I'm standing now is um, on the front corner of our property. The county road's actually just right over here. Uh, but this is our, our main line that we're bringing down the property line. This is the, the edge of our property. So we're coming down the line here, turning, and going back up, all the way back up to the workshop and the barn. So we got all this tied in yesterday, uh, completed. The, uh, Kelly and the boys helped. It was a great day of getting stuff done. Um, a lot of work going up and down this mountain. That's the beauty of having all that help, is we could have Cam up on top with the reel, and Kelly and Liam and I, we'd kind of stage ourselves down the side of the mountain on the benches and be able to uh, uh, work in specific areas of the fence without having to walk all the way back to the top. And fortunately, I've got roads that are cut in, so I could take the tractor and the side-by-side -side and bring it into certain spots uh, so I could have all my supplies with me. So got all this taken care of in one day. Really excited about getting all that tied in. I uh, got it hooked up yesterday evening, put the tester on it right before dinner, and this is what I got. So clearly not an ideal reading there. That's not going to do much. Um, in my experience, you need at least 3 kilovolts to be able to keep the pigs in the pasture. So obviously 1.2, 1.3 isn't going to cut it. So we need to troubleshoot and see what's going on here. So I'm pretty confident the new line's in good shape because we just installed it. And unless a tree fell uh, in the afternoon when we were down here, then that's not going to be the case. And I actually cruised it to go get cam, uh, so we should be good. But I'm going to have to go, uh, now it's time to go to the old section, because I still have that old pasture energized. It shares a common line here. So actually these two whole pastures are energized right now. So I'm going to go check that out. And basically the only thing you can do is walk the line and see what's going on. Because you're mine, I'll walk the line. Now there's two ways I can go about doing this, walking the line, and the first would be to take my tester and maybe take something insulated, usually take an old broken step-in post, fiberglass post, and just walk the line with the charger hot, and if I see anything laying on it, 
you know, flip, flip it off of there, use that insulated piece to get that uh, obstruction off, and uh, then to be able to test as I go along. Sometimes the obstruction's too great that I need to actually move some things, you know, touch the wire, all that. So coming back down and unplugging, of course, would be a hassle. Uh, they make really nice fence chargers, super, super fancy pants ones that have remotes that you can just you know, turn off the uh, um, charger no matter where you are. Makes it really nice. We ain't that fancy here. And then even testers. They make nice testers that you can put on the line and it'll actually tell you where your fault is. Yeah, it'll give you a little arrow so you know, okay, walk this way, walk that way. Ain't got one of those either. All I've got is a simple readout uh, to tell me my voltage and uh, take a hike. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to unplug. I'm not worried about the pigs getting leaving out. Uh, with one, It's hard to tell how long we've only had 1.2 volts, so they haven't busted out. So I'm not worried about it. We'll just keep on, keep on. Well, the first logical place to start is where the little nose miners congregate because they like to push dirt on everything. So we're going to check our line here. Looks good there. I do see an obstruction over here though. It's pretty blatant. Look, there's a food bowl laying against the wire now. <laughs> Some dirt. This is pretty substantial. <laughs> wow! I've been looking for that framing hammer for a year now. One of the things you find, that just shows you that some dummy was here doing fence work and set his hammer down. I think that'll clean up. That's still in pretty good shape. The pigs haven't chewed the handle off of it. I thought they would have done that by now. I forgot about this putt yesterday. I was uh, digging out some silt out of the ditch there using it for some fill elsewhere and so i just laid a log across my fence so i wouldn't tear it up with a bucket forgot to put it back that's a problem must be a little chilly this morning I'm gonna leave you alone. It's cold, I know. I'm gonna sunny rock to lay on. Well, here's the culprit. Or many. I, my goodness, I've knocked probably 15 little beach limbs off of the wire. But to look right here. So this is whitetail. I guarantee it. Whitetail deers come through here, nailed this uh, fence line, and of course broken off the insulator. So that's a clip-on insulator. And guess what I didn't bring with me? And the side by sides all the way down there. <laughs> so I'm about as far as I can be away from the side by side. And that's what we've got. That's about the way it works. I don't have any extra clips. Sometimes I'll put extra clips on these fences. That way I just have access to them. But all I've got are some of the old nail ends to some of the old posts. Okay. Let's keep on trucking. That's a big old lazy pig. Excuse me, ladies. All right, so uh, completed my route. That one insulator is all I need to fix. Time to hit the mountain. <laughs> I love my West Virginia mountains, but man, they can kill you sometimes. Lip hand, lip hand, lip off, lip hand. Alrighty, so we've plugged it back in. 
Let's give a test and see where we are here. Perfect. 1.32. <laughs> well, that's clearly not the output I want. So, the next step is to go double check my ground. Usually, I don't know the statistic, but the majority of your fence issues always come back to your ground once you've established that there's no down spots. So we're going to check that out. But actually, I'm going to take a little break because it is almost time for our Sunday morning church service that's broadcast online. So I'm going to go worship our Lord and Savior with my family. I'll catch you guys here back in a second. So I've, I've had this Patriot Energizer for, oh my goodness, it's probably been four or five years. And these things are, you know, just cheap box store type chargers. I, I think you can get them at uh, Rural King. Tractor Supply carried them for a while. Um, our local feed store carries them. And I think this, this thing is 120 bucks, 89 bucks. And I don't even know what the jewel rating is on it. I'd have to go look at the instruction manual. It, it's not printed anywhere in here. And, and as I'm sure you guys are aware, anytime you're buying an Energizer, look at the jewel rating. Don't look at this foolishness like this says, powers up to 200 acres or 80 hectares, whatever. You know, that's, that's all relative. What you want to see is the jewel output. And that's really going to determine the potency of the Energizer. Anyway, had this thing forever. It works great. Um... It's even kind of gotten out from under. I had it leaned up against a building there, and it's kind of gotten out from under the cover. And you're really not supposed to have these in, in the direct weather. But uh, I'm going to unplug this, and we're going to do some tests. I'll show you a quick trick that I like to do. So I've mentioned before, I've got this little, um, I think this is a Zariba, whatever, however you pronounce it. Like I said, it's busted all to pieces. But a little digital readout. And... And I don't really trust these things to be 100% accurate to say, well, this is exactly the output you're getting, but it's good to use as a gauge. So I use this to determine you know, what's our maximum and what we're getting at the, current, at the current time. So what I like to do, just so I know what I'm dealing with, is I take my ground and my hot lead off the charger. I like to always do this kind of work standing in about three inches of water. So what I do is plug my Energizer back in now that I've got the ground and the hot lead taken off. So this is just completely bare, exposed, uh, or <laughs> this is just completely disconnected. There's nothing connected to it at all. So I take my tester and I put it on my hot lead and put the ground on the ground. And I get a total readout of 13.6. So that leads me to believe that the best that this Energizer will do, plugged in, is 13.6. I'm going to take that again. Thirteen point eight. So to me, that's the baseline. That's the absolute best I'm going to be able to get. So, so with this shoddy ground, one thing I could do is come back and put my tester actually on the ground wire. And what I've read is if you have more than one kilovolt of uh, voltage on your ground wire, then you got too much resistance and you need to clean your ground, you need to make your contacts all clean, make sure you've got uh, a good clean contact on everything and that'll reduce that voltage. Now I don't have that, I, I've actually, I think I've discovered my problem, I'm going to show you here in a second, so, uh, but that was going to be my next step was testing my ground and, and trying to dress this up since like I said it's shoddy the way I've done it, uh, I have to come dress it up maybe every one or two years. But let me show you what I think we've got here. I don't know if the mic's picking this up, but listen real quick. I hear the ticking in that wire. And this is my shoddy uh, jumper here to go down and electrify the weaning pasture, this barren piece of earth. This is where we put the piglets when they first came here. And uh, the other night we had an absolute frog choker, so water came down and got against this fence. So I bet you anything, this portion of fence is grounded out in here. So I'm going to unplug and remove this and see if that gives me a better reading. Yeah, so here we go. See that silt laying against there? You definitely, definitely touching it there and probably one or two other places this way.
Okay, so now back down at our original corner here on my tester. Oh, for the love of Pete. <laughs> Do the dang on tester. Ah, this, ladies and gentlemen, is how I live my life. Here it goes now. So, uh, go back to our original corner here and let's do a test and see what we've got other than a tangled tester cable. So there's 10.4. That'll get your attention. Well, I'm going to link below. I'll provide a link for my tester. Like I said, I think it's less than 50 bucks. And then I'll even link to that Patriot Fence Charger if you guys want to check that out. I, I'm not endorsed by them or anything, uh, but I have been impressed with it. But we now have our trouble figured out. I love that I'm getting 10 kilovolts on this entire fence. So that means everything, the entire two pastures on the south ridge, what I call east and south pastures, even though they're side by side. Uh, the new east pasture is completely energized and the old south pasture is still energized. So you're still getting... Uh, with, with all that fence, what I consider to be probably seven acres of, uh, of hillside, energized at 10.3 kilovolts, that's going to be great. So the plan is to move the pigs. We may move them tomorrow, or we may not. Tomorrow they're calling for really bad winds, a bad storm coming through, which will probably knock our power out. And I don't want to be moving pigs to a new pasture when I can't have the energizer on. That would be a drag. Uh, that wouldn't set the right example. So we'll see. We'll see how the power goes. Obviously, I'll document the moving. That's always fun. And uh, let you guys share in my joy. <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody.